Um, it feels really good. I, I was kind of kind of mentioning um, outside a little bit of what I saw in East Germany, especially was this kind of uh, introduction of Western um, media and taste the West. That, that that there's one billboard with this cigarettes West, and it's taste taste, and it's 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 the creep a little creepy to me because there's this kind of like like real desire to to like have a taste of that, but. But the way the media feeds images of the West, they don't feed the the other side, you know? And I'm sure you feel the other side, you know? But you don't get the other side, so you see how the, the propaganda thing starts to, to work. And then it, it's a bit disorienting because you realize that, that propaganda machine's been going in your own country your whole life, and you're just like, oh. You know, so it's interesting, you know? It's, it's, it's nice coming back here. The one thing I'll say is that, I mean, the people here are really awesome. You know, really beautiful people, and, and um, the pride that they've taken with with the rebuild and, and, and all this kind of stuff it's it's not you don't see that I mean you do you do see that in America but it's kitschier you know it's it's Hollywood you know it's more make believe this is, seems to be like you know I don't know I was walking around the town last night and really enjoying myself just kind of taking in the ambience of the the whole central kind of nature of Europe cities as opposed to Los Angeles which is very chaotic very spread out very kind of insular, you know, um, you know, a lot of, lot of stuff happening, but nobody connecting, really, you know, so that, that's my, you know, I don't know, Kevin, I think I'm just doing this, so, you know, Kevin's playing. All good people are asleep and dreaming. Everybody is dreaming. Everybody is dreaming. Everybody is dreaming. Everybody is dreaming. Yeah, we've talked in, in like in like basic codes about our our interest in, in like um, possibly doing some more stuff together and, and possibly you know like you know further collaborations. We're not sure under what there's 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 a few things with regards to like doing Skinny Puppy again per se. You know because of of certain certain personal issues within us. You know both. Um, but you know we're, we're we're talking about stuff so. Yeah, it's positive. Not negatory. All is good. Well, I think, I think more importantly, I think, I mean, this is my own way of looking at it, and <clears throat> is that I think, you know, both of us, having lived through um, the split up of the band and, and how you know, acrimonious it was, how it was, it was ugly, and, and we were in, you know, t t two camps, and, and we always kind of were in t two camps, polarized, and we had moments where, I mean, it's not all bad all the way through, I mean, obviously we had, we had really great times too, obviously we wouldn't do it for, for that long, but it got to a point where it was, there was a breaking point, obviously, and then a lot of things happened afterwards, and uh, I think for me, and I think for Kevin, based on some of the experiences that, that he's had outside of all of this with life, you know, growing, you know, things like that. We could, we could sit back and wear those clothes, those old nasty clothes full of embittered thoughts and, and, and really kind of become something that Skinny Puppy was never about anyway, because Skinny Puppy was always about change, you know, and about the idea of metamorphosis and overcoming. And, and uh, so within this, you know, to like, you know, you know there, there are certain people within the dynamic of Skinny Puppy who were close and part of, you know, part of it, who still kind of wear those clothes and kind of bitterly hold up this, bleh, you know, and it's, I don't want to live my life that way and I don't think Kevin does anymore either. Yeah, absolutely. But again, you know, I always play into it, this, this template of um, social conditioning in the sense of you know, there is tragedy within this band and there is, you know, a lot of pain at times and a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of shit went on and, and people love tragedy, you know, Macbeth is still a very strong play because of, of the, that sort of aspect in people's consciousness. People love.
to gravitate towards things that are, uh, you know, a little out of reach and, and, you know, feelings that we don't want to get too close to or whatever. And so I think that's possibly why we, you know, have maintained that. And and we were lucky in the sense that we didn't, um, we, we played outside of the, um, of the, you know, normal um, rock and roll sort of paradigm, you know, of the shift of moving towards the center of getting bigger and bigger, we actually moved away from the center and got stranger and stranger. And, and when we did try and move back to the center, the whole thing blew up. So it's it's a different. I mean, I can't compare it to, um, you know, you know. I, I think we have a cult following, we have a very strong cult following, and, and that's worth more to, to me than anything. And you know, popular hyped up bullshit appeal, you know. in the mountains a lot and I smoked a lot of weed and uh, I had a studio space and uh, a lot of elk, a lot of deer uh, just right outside you know and uh, just clean air and a different space. I hadn't been out of LA for so long you know so lots of changes. Hello, it's me, Ogre, uh, from Skinny Puppy, and you're watching the Crazy Clip Show.